Okay, let's see if we can get a, a Facebook Live here with one of my friends. I am looking for Seb or Sebastian Gonzalez. And we're going to have a little conversation today if we can make this work. So, looking for you, Seb. There, Seb. Go ahead and respond to that invitation, Seb, and we'll see if we can get a conversation going on here, mate. And for everybody else there, uh, Sebastian Gonzalez is who we're going to talk with today. He's a podcaster. Uh, from down in Huntington Beach. I got to meet him this past weekend at the R2P Summit or Symposium in uh, Littleton, Colorado. That's, uh, that was hosted by R2P and uh, Marianne Harrington DMAC and also by uh, the Project Move um, Project Move and uh, Stephen Capobianco's uh, work there. A uh, great facility if you guys get a chance to go there uh, and put something together, then by uh, all means do it. So I think we've got Seb coming in here. Yes, Adam. Are you there, Seb? Okay. Is uh, that, uh, look at that. Did... <laughs> it's like happening. Oh, my God. It's funny, I can see you actually on both screens right here. Okay, let's see if we can get a split screen. Okay. And uh, I'll set my camera up in a way that we can do that. Maybe in a, I think you have to have your camera set up on this, Seb, uh, in a horizontal or landscape format. There we go. Okay, let's see if I can, I'm going to figure out how to, see. how do people do this? They just put up like, just put something on a wall and just stick it to it or something? <laughs> I'm going to turn my computer over and see if... <sighs> Damn, it's like you got to jimmy rig this entire setup here. Yeah, we we um, for those of you guys that are watching now, uh, we were just <laughs> we were just uh, we were just trying to set this up on uh, Skype, and Skype wanted to be uh, persnickety today for us, so we decided we would uh, go ahead and try this live. Yeah, I think oh, this is the best. Bobby. All right, Bobby Mozafari says we're sideways. <laughs> All right, let's try it this way. Does that work better, Bobby? Bobby, what's your view on it there, mate? And Eric William, yes, I know. Uh, it takes one to know one. You're a nerd too, my friend. <laughs> Oh, we can talk to these people. God, this is the oh, first yes. Facebook Live I've ever been on. How about that? Okay, so Bobby, we're, uh, we're okay. <laughs> Dave just turned his phone. He's, uh, he's hacking us. Hey, Eric, how's it going, man? So uh, maybe the problem was that, like, they had their phone the wrong way, and we had it correct. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to lean on that. Are you married, Seb, by any chance? Because that's the strategy I use with my wife all the time. Oh, yeah, you're looking at this complete wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that really works, does it? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that it does, yeah. Well, with your with your eye being the psychologist, I don't know how you can get around any of that stuff. Uh, yeah, I know. The, uh, the best we can hope for is that our son is well-adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can... I'm actually recording on my line for the podcast. Uh, okay. We, we can get into it whenever you'd like. Um, do you want me to take the, I guess it's your Facebook live, but I'm leading. No, no, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're the one who, uh, who we're talking, uh, who wants to talk here. So let's, uh, let's talk about some stuff now. Okay. So then, so for everyone, uh, that is listening, doesn't know where actually this is part of an interview we're doing with, uh, Dr. Snell for, uh, my podcast. So I'm going to act like we're going into the podcast because I'm going to have to edit this part later. Okay. <laughs> This is where we get real quiet and the theme music comes on and all that dun, said. Dun, dun, dun. No, that's post, that's post editing. <laughs> okay. So we get okay. a little dance on. Yeah. You can do a little jig. A little, little dance to the music. Okay. there. All right. 
Okay, everyone, uh, as promised, here's an interview with Dr. Philip Snell. What's going on? Uh, not a whole lot other than technological difficulties this morning, but I think right. we've, uh, we've managed to uh, actually get something going. You've actually blown my entire mind about this Facebook Live today. <laughs> um, well, Eric so Haroldson for... did it for me last, uh, last <laughs> week. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a decent way to get some things across here. Yeah. Do, do you go Facebook Live often? Is that a, no. Or you're going to? No. Uh, this, this is the second time that I've done it. So, um, yeah, I think it's a, a decent way to kind of get the, the word out about stuff. Well, there's, there's definitely nine people watching you right now. So I think that's <laughs> more than typically who will watch me in this in this studio. <laughs> um, so so for everyone that doesn't know, we are doing a Facebook Live one today. You probably can I think you can see it in your archives, right? If you go to what are you Phillips Nell DC on Facebook? Yeah, that'll get you. Okay. So I thought some things that we would go into today would be uh, since we met at that conference. Uh, mm -hmm. You had some great ideas with your fix your own back idea, dermal traction, um, and your and maybe go into some case studies. But um, I guess before we even start into that, uh, I guess we should preface this and say that we're can we say it in a way that patients will understand it, but clinicians will be intrigued and say, "Hey, I need to learn this stuff." Uh, which stuff? The uh, the fix your own back or the dermal traction or a little uh, bit of both? Kind of all of them. <laughs> like all, all we'll, we'll go into all of them, but I might ask you a couple like dumbed down questions about say this. How would you say this to a patient, you know? Okay, yeah, well, we were talking uh, just off camera here just a moment ago about uh, the whole dermal traction method stuff. And um, the, um, the, okay, Bobby, Bobby says the perspective of side-by-side -side action is pro-level. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think as long as you don't move your head to your yeah. left, then uh -huh. we're good. <laughs> yeah. So um, as far as the dermal traction stuff goes, um, I like to think of it as an extension of the work that McKinsey did at the nerve root, the n level of the nerve root, and that Alf Brigg, Bob Elvey, uh, Michael Shacklock, and David Butler, and others uh, did at the peripheral level of understanding and appreciating the, um, the local needs, if you will, of uh, neurology in the human body. Uh, if it's compressed beyond a certain point or traction beyond a certain point, it uh, becomes a bit unhappy about its environment and will tend to squeal. And uh, it's in that squealing that it's sort of asking for us to uh, improve the local um, histochemistry around the nerve or to improve the uh, blood flow of the nerve itself. So uh, what we're doing with the dermal traction stuff has just carried it out to a smaller caliber of neurology, uh, more the uh, superficial cutaneous nerves. And those are nerves that many of us learn when we're in school in our anatomy classes and then promptly forget them unless it's, uh, say, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. And we uh, you know, have one name condition for that in neuralgia paresthetica. Mm -hmm. But um, otherwise, we kind of forget a lot of those nerves. Maybe greater occipital neuralgia we'll talk about uh, sometimes uh, in terms of headache uh, phenomena. But uh, really, all of, those, um, all of those superficial nerves have the potential to uh, contribute to uh, neuropathic pain syndrome. And unless you at least consider that possibility and explore it, then um, from my experience uh, and others that are playing with this stuff, you're probably leaving a lot of pain syndromes on the table untreated, um, and the treatment is frightfully easy. Um, it can be uh, as simple as just manual uh, traction over the area. Uh, you can use, you know, cupping types of things. Um, you could use stuff like um, uh, instrument-assisted um, uh, tissue manipulation. Uh, Steve uh, Capabianco showed us some really nice things that they're using with rock blades, uh, with mm -hmm. rock tape, and uh, how to finesse that and using certain movements and certain aspects of their uh, very novel uh, instrument assisted technique there as well. Yeah, they had the door handle, right? That was the main takeaway was the door handle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got so, it. So for everyone watching then, can you, can you yap your own dermal traction, your own herb point for me? <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to live on Facebook. I'm going to yap myself. <laughs> what most people don't know is that I'm pretty much naked from the waist down right now. So, uh, you know, I'm going to have to be very careful with this. 
Oh, yes, yes. Don't pan that camera down at all. I'm not at all. I'm keeping it rock solid and steady up above here. <laughs> but but here we are. Look at that. See that? That's so little, easy. Little dermal traction just behind mid-belly of the SCM. And then some rotation. Typically, uh, according to the way that we meet out the, uh, the, the particular methodology there, um, you ask a patient or a person um, to describe a painful movement. And then with your understanding of the anatomy there, you um, consider the possibility of uh, entrapment of any of that superficial neurology. And simply in this case, it might be a patient that has pain with rotation, as we demonstrated in Denver at the uh, conference. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a patient that has restricted range of motion and pain, say, with right rotation. And you might go here, apply a little bit here. Thanks, Bobby. Hashtag yap <laughs> your herb. Well played. So we put a little uh, traction <laughs> here and then a rotation and ask the, the patient whether they are uh, experiencing reduction in their symptoms um, with that movement. And you uh, objectively are looking as a clinician to see if there's an improvement in range of motion. And often the, the, the improvement is very dramatic and uh, instantaneous. Now, just as often it might be a partial improvement, maybe 30% improvement in their pain. And if so, we'll just have them to do repetitions with it like that and then take the hand away and have them to repeat the movement and see if their range of motion has improved and their pain has decreased. Um, since uh, with that particular point, herbs point, we've got um, uh, we've got uh, four particular nerves that go out there that come out from right behind the SCM. There, once the lesser occipital nerve, uh, the greater auricular nerve, transverse cervical nerve, and then my favorite, <laughs> the uh, supraclavicular nerve that drapes across the whole shoulder, kind of like a shawl. So it's a like lot the of sexiest these, of the nerves, or it, it is, it is. Uh, uh, because it, co it covers more areas, um, it actually has some slivers that go to the capsule along with the, uh, the suprascapular nerve. And um, it, yes, as the name would infer, goes across the front and the supraclavicular nerve. But often those quote unquote trigger points that we're working on in the upper traps, um, often uh, if you just skin roll over the trap in that area along the course of that, you do herbs point here and then kind of just assess manually by skin rolling along the course of those nerves and see where it feels like the tissues are a little non-compliant, uh, a little bit dense mm -hmm. and not moving so well. Then you can uh, kind of hone in on those areas and see if it works. And that's kind of what we did with Matt Ward um, there in uh, Denver. And we went to Herb's point, there was no change, but just assessing each one of those nerves, we found lesser occipital involvement seemingly from uh, the palpatory mm -hmm. findings. And when we opened up a little bit there, his range of motion immediately improved and his uh, pain went down. Now, probably so, the biggest thing that people get all, uh, that patients get um, kind of frustrated with on this stuff is you teach them how to do it and they do it and it, they feel better when they do it. And then the pain comes back and restricted range of motion comes back a little while later. And the, according to some of the research out there, in the theoretical research of Jeff Bove and such, um, we need to open that, uh, that area up around the nerve frequently to allow for better blood flow until the body starts to take that range of motion back and the impediment or threat to the nerve is not causing the muscles around there to um, uh, splint and guard the area. So then just to recount a on a couple ideas, so that you mentioned that you kind of, you can skin roll along the knots of the whatever muscle you're saying. So you're saying that the muscular response is from the nerve being sensitized. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, John Quentner, uh, the lead author on a paper in rheumatology a couple of years ago, talking about the, um, the change in the paradigm that we're having right now in um, myofascial trigger points. Jeff Bove was second author on that paper, by the way. But um, uh, Quintner was a uh, student, I believe, of Bob Elvey in Australia way back in the day. And um, Elvey was fond, um, I've, so I've been told, fond of saying that uh, muscles protect nerves, muscles protect nerves. So when you're looking at clinical pain syndromes and stiffness and tightness of muscle, you know, we're, we're taught readily in school how to assess those tight muscles. But if we don't 
ask ourselves why they're tight and start looking inside of the, the body's reaction and how it's trying to adapt to, to whatever environment you've placed it in, then, um, yeah, we can just start stretching away protective mechanisms and mm -hmm. uh, wind up with pushback. And oftentimes those are the spasms that we deal with when working with muscles. So, so is there a, I know you probably get it a lot. Like people come in and they, they talk about the tightness of their muscles. Is there, when you, when you're doing this dermal traction, just pulling on the skin, is there some type of uh, talk that you usually have to have about their past thoughts on if it's just tight because of the muscles, the root issue, or and then you talk about the nervous or something goes on. Yeah. You know, one of, one of the cool things um, I think about doing this, and this is kind of um, playing that balancing act these days with the emerging evidence, especially the emerging evidence that is um, that has to do with um, uh, pain neuroscience. Um, patients come in, maybe they, you know, like I just had one a couple of days ago with pain with rotation, and they their question to me was, um, well, I've had an x-ray of my neck and it demonstrates that there's osteoarthritis in my neck. And um, I've been to chiropractors before and they just, you know, manipulate my neck and it feels better. And um, I've been under the impression that the only way for me to really deal with this osteoarthritis in my neck, which is the cause in their mind of the restricted range of motion and the pain is to have my neck cranked around uh, relatively regularly by a chiropractor. And, you can see without saying anything when you just apply a little bit of pressure or, or tension there over that area and very quickly have a change in um, symptoms and an improvement in function you can see the wheels start to grind in that person uh, like wow uh, what did you just do because you certainly didn't change my joints or anything in that area by by doing that traction that you're doing Mm -hmm. So you can see in that particular case that their idea of um, of what was causing their symptoms of being possibly uh, uh, osteoarthritic and that being in their mind often a linear process that doesn't have a happy ending typically, mm -hmm. then uh, they start to consider, wow, this could be very, very simple and superficial and even more to the point we improve their self-efficacy and their empowerment by showing them how to do it very quickly after that. I'll often follow up and say, yeah, isn't that cool that we can do that? Well, people would talk if I followed you around all day and did this. So I want you to uh, replace <laughs> my hand with yours and what would they, do it yourself. What would, what would they say if you did follow them around all day? I'm, I'm sure they would, uh, <laughs> they would assume we were doing some kind of uh, internet stunt somewhere, but uh, <laughs> Well, I think it's kind of like beautiful that actually that the skin pull is it's seemingly so simple, yet it produces a result that yeah. I mean, if you you're really like cranking on them, they would think well, you're getting so deep that it is something else. Right. Yeah, exactly. And and also people in the pain neuroscience community might say, well, you're creating a whole bunch of afferent input. My 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 traction here and in all of these areas does not have to be noxious and you can test, do a same si an opposite side test as a screen to see if, um, uh, if that is, uh, are, are my messages popping up on the screen? Anybody that's on here? Are you seeing this? You have because, messages? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see one people of, watching. I saw Marianne watching on there. Yeah, I did. I did too. And I see Alan Jinks over in uh, the, uh, the, uh, and Holland has just checked in as well. Hey, Alan, I hope your PhD works going well. Um, yeah, the most active the, person on here is Bobby, though. Hey, Stephen. Yeah, by the way. Bob. Bobby always likes to get on here and go with it, man. So Bobby says, so if this is seemingly an issue of affrontation changes to the cutaneous nerves, then would stem tens be potentially more beneficial while yapping, or uh, DTMing, as we say now, Bobby. Those in the know, right? Um, but uh, yeah, potentially. Um, uh, to to my mind, this is my bias. Um, to my mind, putting more things that I have to do, that I have control over, that the patient is more likely to attribute to the coolness of me and my office in, uh, in, up in the forefront, I tend to shy away from that. I want to very quickly, as soon as I do this and the lights come on and they think, wow, that's 
magic or that's wizardry or sorcery. I want to disengage that thought pattern as quickly as I can and say, now you put your fingers there and do the same darn thing. And when they see that they can do things, uh, do that stuff themselves just as easily, then they take the reins and now they're the ones that are actually helping themselves. It's really crappy for business, quite handed, quite honestly, because you, uh, you don't need to see people as frequently uh, in our work in order to get them better. But uh, as I've told the students that come through our office, you just have to get really good at doing new patient exams because uh, you get a lot, of, uh, a lot of referrals for that kind of stuff. Yeah, you, you had said something interesting at, at the symposium that you would, you'll, you'd rather leave pain on the table well, I, I'll say that it's sometimes I will leave pain on the table, um, a little bit of pain in my patients as they walk out that, they, that they've demonstrated their ability to be able to, um, to control. So maybe getting back to Bobby's question, maybe rather than going the extra mile and doing the, the tens and the, and the heat and everything to uh, also do that uh, to help with the condition and completely take away their pain, I might leave them with a little bit of pain that they can then demonstrate to themselves that they can control. That helps to keep them a little more, to my mind, keep them a little bit more accountable and engaged in their own self-care rather than saying, gosh, I can't wait until next week when I get back with, uh, with, uh, with the doc and be able to have him fix me. Uh, I thought the beauty like with, with you working on people, though, or working with people, is that they get to see your awesome salmon pants. Ah, uh, you know, but I, I disappointed um, this past weekend, and I've, I've, I've gotten a surprising number of uh, disappointing responses to the, the stuff that I wasn't wearing uh, my, my uh, we'll call them burnt umber pants, or, uh, <laughs> so um, I, 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 I shit you not, this, just last night, I was complaining to this, uh, about this to my wife, somewhat half-heartedly, and she being a, uh, take life by the throat kind of person she goes right on and uh, uh online and found she found some uh some humdingers i uh i will be uh showing diff up different in... types of hammer pants yes you got it you got it <laughs> stop hammer time i, I can't wait <laughs> so uh yeah i might be i might be breaking some of those out at our uh next portland course um for the clinical companion for fix your own back in a couple of weeks it's uh, uh going to be here in portland our third in a well, row sold out show. Oh yeah, yep. Third in a row. Can, what's the yep. what's the sellout on that? Uh, it's about 30, uh, 30 people. We put an extra ten on board for the Seattle course. Hey Justin, I see you just came online as well. Uh, Dr. Justin Dean is on there. He's the uh, co-creator of the Dermal Traction Movement, uh, also known as YAP, uh, with me as well. So uh, Justin, he, he missed everything. He, he missed your herb yap. Uh, yeah, you, we, <laughs> Justin, we were just, we were just herb yapping. We were just doing it, man. You missed it. <laughs> By the way, Probably. on those videos, since I was going through them, you can see like Justin is just like half smiling. He's like, uh, there was one where there was the peck wiggle like that. Yeah. He's like half smiling. Like this looks, this looks, looks silly right now. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was, he was doing his best to try to, to keep a straight game face on all of that, but it didn't, it didn't help that, uh, we were poking him in the ribs and stuff the entire time, trying to get him to giggle too. Yeah. So then moving into like just the idea of uh, the Fix Your Own Back seminar, um, talk about that and actually how you would correlate YAP into that or dermal traction. What should we call her? Are you guys going dermal traction? Yeah, we're going DTM, uh, dermal traction uh, method. The reason why we're going that way, quite honestly, I mean, the, the reason why we initially – started um, to call it YAP is because we were basically poking fun of the name systems of manual therapy that are out there. You know, everybody knows in order to have a successful manual therapy technique, it has to have an acronym of three letters typically. Some are going rogue these days and using only two. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were, we were kind of uh, poking fun at that whole process. And um, the, the, the poking fun has kind of actually hindered people taking it on because they think we're just, you know, we're just joking here. I mean, honestly, when we initially put the, started thinking about putting it together, um, we were going to get people all excited about a thousand dollar weekend course. And then for the registration page, we were going to Rick roll them. 
but um, <laughs> we just, uh, decided that might be a little bit too rude. So uh, now um, we're, uh, we're just doing a, um, uh, we're trying to change the name because people uh, legitimately are looking at doing some case studies and such. And I've done some presentations as well in, um, in front of uh, a bunch of specialty physicians at Kaiser and uh, standing in front of 20 MDs and telling them that what you're, uh, the reason why they didn't have to put that hip patient uh, into surgery was because you were yanking away in their pain um, <laughs> was was a little bit difficult. So I think we just needed to uh, to put a fresher face on it. That's a little more acceptable, an acronym that's more acceptable. I don't know. I, I, I think that I think kind of maybe the reason why, like I was saying grassroots, like why did something like get popular as it was just the ridiculousness of, of saying you're yanking someone's pain away it might just have been the thing that you need to keep. Never it done. might be, you know, for, <laughs> at, at the very least, probably for the, uh, the, those, of, those out there, many of them on this particular uh, call, as I, their names I see going across uh, here, many of them will always have yap. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when you have a favorite band when you're younger, you know, and then when you get a little older, you're like, yeah, I knew them before they were really big. Right. I, so I, I almost asked you at the symposium and uh, I asked Cody on the side, actually, I'm like, I'm like, I want to know the background of why the fist, why the double thunderbolt, and then why the city, and then what drugs were you on where you thought that, yeah, all of these parts need to be part of this logo. <laughs> Uh, I can break that down if you want, because I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm big, I'm big into symbology and that kind of stuff. But the, um, the thing that I uh, was trying to hit with that, and uh, there's been some pushback, some people think it's too political. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in Portland, Oregon, and here in Portland, we are uh, uh, a little bit on the, the left coast, you might say, right? And mm -hmm. um the uh, the raised fist uh, symbol is sort of a uh, a product of the uh, the Workers Party um, uh, and uh, the Wobblies back in the 1920s. The um, <laughs> I, I actually uh, had no idea I was going to go this Steve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, and the idea of that is empowerment of the people. So. Um, you know, many people remember the uh, the athletes in the Olympics that one year, uh, the gold and silver on the podium that raised their uh, their hands overhead and dropped their their head. Um, it's uh, it's sort of a classic um, way of saying power to the people. Mm -hmm. And part of what we're doing with this is literally putting the hands of pain control in the hands of the uh, putting the uh, the, the pain control in the hands of the people. And uh, one of my, um, one of my, one of the people that I know that this has worked on very well is, uh, is a uh, graphic artist by the name of um, Bruce Zick, Z-I-C-K. You guys should check his stuff out on uh, online. He's, uh, he used to be, uh, and still is, I guess, an illustrator for Marvel Comics. Uh, I think he's done some stuff for Dark Horse. But he's also done uh, work for um, Will Venton Studios here in Portland. And also um, uh, he's worked with George Lucas. He's worked with uh, uh, Coppola. Um, he's worked with Steven Spielberg. And uh, he found a lot of benefit from that uh, Yap work and um, offered to do the logo. So the logo is Portland Skyline. Mm-hmm with Mount Hood in the background, the green race fist, because it's a green kind of, uh, you know, a green party kind of uh, <laughs> uh, populism up here in the Pacific Northwest. And then the, I, the logo was uh, manual therapy and music for the mass, uh, manual therapy and movement for the masses. You can put music in there too, but yeah. Uh, well, it, almost, it almost looks like an album cover, really. ACDC maybe. That's the idea, man. <laughs> Uh, so then, God, I don't even know where to go from, <laughs> from there. Can, I'm kind of curious if we can foster some questions about that. If anyone has any questions about yeah. that, uh, the, the YAP logo. Or if anybody's got any questions at all, um, nice to see some of you folks. Hey, there's Bo Beard is on here. I hope you guys enjoyed your ski time out in, uh, 
uh, where was it, Bo? Copper somewhere. You were in Colorado, I know. You looked like you were being very patient with Sloan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nate Cashin's on here. Uh, Nate, formerly here at uh, Western States, and uh, now is out in the Midwest. Are you in the Dakotas, Nate? I think you are. Okay. Yeah, so if anybody has any more questions on YAP on Facebook Live, then uh, now's the time to ask because we're going to tangent off into Fix Your Own Back. We got 10 seconds. 10 One, seconds, folks. Two, three, four, five. Hi, Fabio. Fabi. Okay, so <laughs> fix your own back then. Um, I kind I really like the idea that we were talking about uh, afterwards on this. And it was, it seemed like almost like an empowerment of the people as well to set up places that can assist people in realizing they have an own, their own uh, part in fixing their back. Does that sound right? Right. So tell everyone about that and what your vision is. Um, what I would like to see happen at some point um, is we are exploring the concept of taking the methodology we use in, in our clinic um, to address uh, lumbar disc herniation. Uh, we're going to try to see if we can put that into a clinical model and a, <clears throat> a tight small, um, lean clinic that makes sense economically and um, handles one of the most expensive um, uh, drains on public health care in our sphere and, and in any sphere, uh, the amount that we spend to manage uh, the, the dysfunction or the disability and pain associated with, um, with uh, uh, lumbar disc herniation rivals what we spend on either uh, diabetes or cancer annually in the United States. So we're looking to take what we've seen uh, successful in the clinical environment, um, which that spawned the online uh, site that I put together called Fix Your Own Back, which was uh, targeting people that have that injury and are trying to make sense out of how to uh, fix it as much as they can themselves and they can do a whole lot for themselves. And now we're with the coursework, uh, as more docs have asked to, um, to have a share what we're exactly we're doing in clinic. When we teach the courses, as we teach them, we wanna create enough people that, uh, that are out there that when people contact me on uh, the Fix Your Own Back site online, and they're like, you know, I need a little bit more help than what the site's provided me. I need some hands-on work. I'd like to be able to refer them to people that have been exposed to this type of uh, work so that uh, that can help to improve the, the, the attendees to the course, improve their um, uh, uh, patient recruitment. And uh, ultimately, uh, similar to what you see in other venues out there like Arosti and such, uh, put together something that looks like a, um, a training center here in Portland and have people to come out and train. And then we could take our uh, uh, marketing program into their community, license the, uh, their clinic as a fix your own back clinic, and then go and help them um, reach out and liaise with local physicians, uh, MDs, where those patients are and try to get those patients into their clinic and try to solve the problem. Uh, it's a public health issue, and this is a way, one more way to lever, leverage technology to try to uh, solve those problems. So then I, I'm, I'm trying to think of some questions that some consumers might have. They're like, well, you know, fix your own back thing, but then you're trying to send me to a clinic. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, well, people, if people are in pain and trying to deal with this, as you well know from your work as well, um, they they are looking for solutions and there are painfully few, pardon the pun, um, out there for them to manage that once you get beyond something that looks like um, McKenzie or MDT kinds of treatment. And then you see people put into the, uh, the McKenzie purgatory and uh, all they get is just repetitive end range loading. Yeah, lather, rinse, and repeat, and they just do that, and that's the only thing they've got. That nobody really bothers to spend the time to discuss with them the mechanics involved and the actual injury and the power that they have to prevent those uh, injurious movements. 
So yeah, people will, um, um, they're looking for somebody to be able to help them. Um, I don't know if, uh, you know, I'm sure there will be some cynics out there to think that this is just, you know, some kind of a, another glorified way of, uh, of, you know, getting people to into a clinical process that they don't really need, but you know, those cynics are going to be around. Um, I think folks, folks that know me and folks that know the kind of work that we're doing know that the, uh, the root, the root at what we're doing here is trying to help, um, from a public health standpoint and trying to empower patients. So, uh, the ha haters are always going to be there. Haters are going to hate. Yep. That's a, that's a Pikachu always said, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with that. It's, um, it, it's funny, actually, I was talking to Cody the other night, because I, I actually, it's funny, I, I did a, I did a podcast on how I had successfully defeated back pain years ago. And then right after that released, I had another an episode, right? It was years. And years later. <laughs> I didn't knock on wood at that point. It was kind of a pain in the ass, but it wasn't really bad. So I went over to Cody to get an eval after about two weeks, because I realized that uh, I was doing a poor job of managing myself or I was yeah. missing something. Right. So I've managed, he gave me some recommendations. I managed myself for probably about two, three months now. And now baseball season is here right now. And right. this is going to release later on the podcast. But so I typically pay, play baseball and I've been asked like, Hey, are you going to play this year? I'm like, uh, I, and I realized at that point I have fear avoidance. Right. Uh -huh. So I'm like, I feel good, but there's another problem here. So me and Cody were having a beer, and I was like, look, I, I, I want you to manage my case, and I want to go to someone like Brennan to then apply load because there is that purgatory. And I don't think – I personally think I'm too emotionally close to the injury where I cannot make a solid decision. Yeah. And so when people manage their own back pain, I'm sure they only get so far, they get a success, and then they need somebody, right? Uh-huh. So, so, so let, let me ask, let me ask you, Seb, in that particular situation, what is it, um, when you think about going back and playing baseball, what position did you play? Outfield. So when you think about going back and you think about all the demands of you playing outfield and, um, and batting and running the bases, what's the first thing that comes to mind that you're wondering, eh, I don't know if I can do that. Well, the first is that I realized that I've spent enough time over the last few months, not conditioning myself to play ah. which is concerning because you just can't go out and sprint so general physical preparedness was lacking okay right um and then if i would have thought about it a long time ago i should have been doing that months ago right? right um probably the other thing is so i've had a past history way back my first back injury was in high school um but it was from an impact at a base so i'd say a little bit more traumatic but eight months of rehab and all that kind of jazz and finally got back and very first swing, first game, first at bat, it hurt again. Yeah. So the swing, like, the swing is what would get most people. And right. and so I mean, for for those in FMS world, you know, that's a probably a rotary stability issue. And um, on the the site, the fix your own back site itself, um, the way the thing is organized and the way that we treat it in clinic is you have an ordered process uh, that you go through. And rotary stability uh, is part of the chapter five pro uh, in the nine chapter program that, that goes along on the fix your own backside and what we teach in the, uh, the courses. So um, before you get to that point, you would have already gotten well to the point where you are in your rehab now, and you would have demonstrated adequate endurance in your course, uh, your core muscles um, per, per uh, McGill's functional capacity evaluation. And, uh, then, um, and then the, uh, beyond that, um, you would start to work on mobility in the hips and the upper back, uh, mm -hmm. another area that would help to play into your, uh, to your swing there and making sure the power is coming out of your hips instead of applying power to the lower back while you're in that swing. And uh, then you'd work on putting those together and using movements that look a lot like, you know, chops, swings, pal offs and that kind of stuff to really build uh, your ability to manage load in that area. And then once you've got that in that uh, have achieved some of that in the, um, the rehab setting, 
uh, then you go go out and take a bat and start smacking on a heavy bag, you know, working on your strides and really getting a sense of how to apply load in that way and doing the same thing with your throws, uh, which is also going to require that same kind of thing. Yeah. And that's definitely, um, uh, thanks for the advice, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's not always time to get, you don't always get this opportunity. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I agree. And what I experience and see with people um, is that, a lot of them are very, they're very much okay with like, hey, I don't hurt. I think I'm not going to do that. I'm too old now, right? Yeah. I don't, yeah. don't want to feel that. Um, so I think that's why I think a program you're putting together is really good. Um, Bobby, Bobby has said eight months of rehab, dang, it must have been an injury. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I don't think it was necessarily, they actually checked to make sure there was no uh, parse fracture, which has a possibility. But um, uh, I th actually, I think the first, uh, I think I, I take it back. It was five months of terrible or terrible rehab, and then three <laughs> months of three months of better. The five months I think was when the the swing reoccurred. I basically lost nearly an entire season, so um, that's why I think it was eight months. It was just non successful. It was it was not. There was a lot of it was a lot of rolling, a lot of rest, a lot of ice, a lot of heat, things like that. It was very passive, so it didn't really allow me to do the stuff like your rotary stabilization and so on. Right. Right. So I'm sure that you see a lot of Clint. Why did you Why did you create the fix your own back thing? Because the you must see there's a there's a void out there. Um, you know, there's a blog on the site, and there for for those that are bored, you can go and read uh, a uh, one of the posts called um, "For the Sake of Carl." Uh, the The reason why I actually put the site together was kind of a a, a moment with a patient, um, and after taking a a big burly guy that lifts weights um, a lot. And that was kind of where his identity was. And he'd been sidelined for months with a disc injury and in severe pain when he came in. Um, after taking him through the first hour or so of, um, of our work, uh, I had him pulling weight from the floor again for the first time in many months. And uh, he sat down and he started to cry uh, in front of me. So it was a little bit of an awkward moment. And um, I, ask him what was up. And he looked at me and he said, where in the hell was I supposed to learn this? And I didn't have an answer with, you know, for him. Um, the, the idea of taking multiple disciplines of rehab, multiple disciplines of, of, um, of, of in, lines of inquiry in, in, uh, in the research and leveraging all of that into something that is easy to understand and easy to apply and damned effective at, at taking care of something that, you know, is among the, the more difficult pains that many of us will have in a life. I know I've had it. And uh, that eight, nine, or 10 out of 10 pain that really goes right to the heart of you as a man, especially with your, your feelings of, um, you know, uh, your feelings of whether or not you're going to be able to earn a living and provide for your family um, with, especially with women that are dealing with young kids and such, whether or not they're going to be able to actually manage, um, uh, uh, being a good parent and taking care of the, uh, the needs of their children. This, this cuts right to the core, um, for a lot of people. And, um, i I felt like, uh, you know, I read Dante's Inferno and there's a, there's a special ring of hell, um, reserved for those that knew better, but didn't. And uh, I I've, <laughs> have always decided that uh, I don't want to belong. I don't want to be, wind up in that particular place. So I'll uh, yeah. stay out of there. I think, I think it's a good, this is a good thing. The, uh, I know I've, I've thought, I think, I think I might've told you about this when we were there uh, that um, I get frustrated with, with people coming in or not, not the people, but the, the lack of knowledge they come they have coming in at least about very basic things surrounding their body and injuries and pain and so on. And I started, found myself just like, you know, like bitching about it. Right. And I'm like, I got no right to, to bitch about it if I don't try to do something to fix the problem. So right. I don't want to be in that ring of hell either. <laughs> right. And, and for those of you, uh, I'm just noticing here too, the different folks that are, you know, coming and going on all of this. Uh, for those of you that have listened to some of this and you think uh, that, you or some of your colleagues um, might be interested in coming to some of these, then just uh, put their name on here and put the uh, put their name on so that they can come and get a little bit of an idea about what we're doing. We've got a course coming up uh, in 
uh, our next course that's not sold out is all the way out into, uh, I believe it's April, isn't it, Eric Haroldson, um, in Minneapolis. And uh, then we got a course in L.A. in, uh, in uh, June as well. And Ben Ramos, who just came on here, is going to uh, be the host there. So if any of you guys in, say, Minneapolis or L.A. Uh, areas think that uh, you know people that might want to come to that course, just tag their name on here so they can get a little bit of an understanding of what we're doing. You, you do have a true mastery of Facebook. I would have never thought that. <laughs> <laughs> May 5th and 6th, Eric says, for um, uh, um, the course in Minneapolis. That'll be just after my birthday. So we'll, uh, uh, Eric tells me we're going to have some, uh, what was it, Eric? We're going to do a, uh, a tri-tip or was it a brisket? I think it was a brisket and some homebrew. So we'll have a good time. Home, homebrew, moonshine or beer? Uh, beer. Okay. Um, haven't, ha haven't had the other since I left North Carolina once upon a time. <laughs> you do have glasses on, so maybe you had a little nip of it. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Oh, June sixteenth and seventeenth in LA, and uh, Ben Ramos is saying uh, you better be there, Seb. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We are. We are actually in, doing Instagram the other day, and like he kept sending me all these like, go to this, go to this, go to this. I'm like, God, you're a fucking hype man for like all these oh. like seminars. <laughs> yeah, uh, you you will not find you won't be able to catch up with Ben. Ben yeah. has been running at that pace for so many years. I know a few people that have taken more continuing education and have applied themselves uh more diligently than that that man um he is truly a force of nature and mm -hmm. uh anybody down the san diego area that needs some help check out flow force rehab and uh dr ben ramos he is uh it's ramos not ramos i'm going um, with ramos <laughs> <laughs> i don't think he, he doesn't deserve the right to have the correct name kind of like teslas i call them tulsas honestly they deserve the right <laughs> Um, oh, so because this podcast is going to come out later than I think May, where would people find the uh, next seminars if they're hearing it on there? Because I'm sure you're going to add them to a, to a site, right? Yeah, if you go to uh, fixyourownback.com, at the top of the page, there's a, uh, a heading tab for uh, clinical courses, and we try to keep that updated as well. Uh, at this point, we've got... Um, the next course in Portland, which is sold out. The next course in Seattle, which is sold out uh, after that. Uh, then we've got Minneapolis uh, in May, uh, L.A. in June. Um, we're looking right now about the possibility of putting a course on in July in New York, upstate New York in Albany. Um, we're uh, out in August, so I can take a little rest. And then in uh, September, we come to Vancouver, BC. Um, then in November, we're looking at going into the Great White. We've got uh, Toronto, and uh, we're putting Winnipeg on the books now in November as well. Nice. Um, look, look at Ramos down there. Ramos. <laughs> 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 so if you're everyone on the podcast uh, uh ben's a huge hype man um and so if you want a huge student discount for that course it is flowforce uh rehab.com slash forward slash dr philip snell which has those little what all those all those subheadings always have these little dashes in them so put those little dashes between his name um yeah huge hype man there <laughs> yeah he's he's a master yeah um so for everyone that's uh, at least watching on Facebook Live, or we're going to foster some questions here. Uh, we've spoken about dermal traction. We've spoken about fix your own back. Is there anything that you actually want to hear Dr. Snell speak about in those realms? Or is there anything that you really want to ask him but didn't want to ask him to his face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to hide behind your computer, man? <laughs> you know, I, I feel like that whole interaction right there of like you getting close to the camera, I feel like that should be on the face of your website. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Screenshot yes. this. Yeah. That, okay. I'm going to. Oh, DMAC. Oh, DMAC oh. is here. We've been talking about Cody. Seb was mentioning Cody. This is the Cody DMAC. So, um, Cody, I, yeah, I said, I said that our talk about the other night about how we're going to co-manage a little bit um and uh cody was actually going to bust in here and uh jump in the back of the screen and uh -huh. say hey if we were still recording but he had some patience i uh, imagine that man's got to work yeah right um cody 
come up with a good question that we can answer here. Um, oh, we're no. tangent about some other things. Oh, boy. I can't wait to hear this one. Yeah. If you, do, if you don't ask a question, <laughs> I want you to get off of this uh, thing. Bobby, by the way, uh, um, thanks must... for that. I saw that comment earlier. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Dr. Snow, what's your, uh, what's your, what are your home, is it say homes, dreams, hopes, dreams, and inspiration? Hopes, dreams, and inspirations, huh? Um, you know, I just really want world peace, Bobby, and um, an, an end of the strangle, <laughs> an end of the stranglehold of the NRA on politics in the United States. And uh, I'd like for us all to just get along. <laughs> you need a teddy bear if you're going to say it, okay? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm right here in my bedroom. I can reach over and grab the one that's right here on my bed. I'm sure you have like 15 throw pillows. You look like a throw pillow kind of dude. <laughs> I am a throw pillow kind of dude. Yeah. Um, so uh, then bring bring to the two concepts together of, uh, let's see, I'm looking forward to Snell's course, a little rehab. Oh, cool. It's hard. Yeah, that's, it, Bri that's Brian Gervais. He's uh, one of the folks that's helping with uh, putting the course together in Minneapolis with Eric Haroldson and Eric uh, Reese. Oh, well, thank you, Eric. Uh, thank you, Brian. That's very kind of you. Uh, let's see. Oh, screw you, Cody. You're actually going to ask real questions. Does passive extension really push the nucleus forward? Depends on who you ask and who the patient is. Before you, before you answer that, can you break that down into patient terms? <laughs> <laughs> Does standing up or laying down and bending backwards a whole bunch push the contents of the disc away from the nerve root? Uh, yes, yeah, some of the McKinsey uh, literature would suggest yes. Uh, there was a paper by Jarvik uh, that uh, Mike Shacklock talks about in um, his course. It's only, I believe, if memory serves, a cohort of nine people on uh, MRI. And uh, <laughs> thanks, Ben. Does the carpet match the drapes? Um, the, <laughs> uh, the, uh, but as far as whether or not it actually pushes the, the disc away, um, when you do extension in that way, if there is a, a huge loss of hydrostatic pressure in the disc, then you can wind up with more likely uh, delamination of the uh, lam uh, lamellar layers in the uh, posterior portion of the disc. Um, if you can imagine that, if you've got layer upon layer upon layer and the hydrostatic pressure has lost so that the, um, uh, the, there's not quite as much tension on that structure, when you start to push, uh, then you'll wind up with the lamellar layers kind of separating like this. You've got part going out, part going in, and you're not, you don't really have the mechanical effect that you're, um, uh, that you're going to get. I'm not sure if I should repeat what uh, yeah. Cody just said, but yes, yes, it does. Yes, it does, Cody. Um, I, and I, I've, uh, I, I was enjoying those Odell uh, <laughs> uh, beers there. I, I got to say, as our first Facebook Live, or at least my Facebook Live podcast, um, I, I admire your dedication to not being distracted by these uh, things flying across the screen. And all these random questions. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my focus game is strong. Tom Lotus uh, joined on here. Tom, uh, great to see you here. Um, this guy is doing some truly remarkable stuff with the, uh, the folks at Research Institute in Chicago with um, uh, Annie O'Sullivan and those, those folks with the um, uh, pain classification. Uh, I really like what it is. For those of you that haven't uh, taken in a World of Hurt course or read the book World of Hurt, you really ought to check that out. Uh, Brian Gervais has just had a new patient leave. His right leg was a mess. He had a prostate removed three days ago from his leg, Brian. Um, legs were in stirrups and caused significant pain. Uh, Zero, Zero to five hip flexion, could not lift, only drag. Oh, boy, any tips would be helpful. Uh, Brian, that's a little more complicated, and we're going to get in a Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook Live there. We'll have to uh, maybe PM that a little bit later. Let's, um, can, can we go over a, a typical case, then, that you think that you would take through, since we talked about dermal traction, we've talked about fix your own back. Um, what is, what's a typical type of presentation that you think would be awesome for this whole progress? Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm hemming and hawing because I got to be a little bit careful here because we had a, um, 
um, a baseball player in the clinic uh, a few weeks ago. And um, I think I talked about this in at least one of the, the sessions that we had at, uh, in Denver. But um, one of my uh, associates, uh, Dr. Um, Co uh, Corey Peterson, who's absolutely fabulous doc, uh, works right there with me in the office in Portland. Um, Corey saw this guy and uh, he'd been dealing with lower back pain and some radiating pain into his leg for um, three months. Uh, the injury came uh, from deadlifting in the gym. Uh, he was a pitcher pulling uh, over 400 from the floor deadlifting. And, um, you know, I've got nothing in the world against deadlifting. It's the, the, the base note of what we do with the Fix Your Own Back program to uh, help people with their, their, uh, their disc injury. But um, he had injured himself with that, was taught, uh, was told by his orthopedist uh, based on an MRI that the injury to his disc was not significant enough to be causing the symptoms that he was having. So then he was sent to a physical therapist here in town who, a um, uh, well-known uh, individual who following the doctor's um, uh, notion of what was going on there, decided that Jefferson curls were the things, uh, the thing to do with this guy. And he seemed to be getting worse with that. And that's when the, uh, uh, he was referred over to our clinic kind of, um, we're not in their referral network where he was, um, uh, where he was associated with. And his primary symptom um, came on when he was studying, when he would be sitting with his legs outstretched in a chair in front of him and he would bend forward to try to touch his foot, and he would get a zing down the back of his leg that was very reproducible there. And those of you that, you know, understand your orthopedic test, it looks a whole lot like a seated slump test, right? So uh, it was like shooting fish in a barrel for uh, Dr. Peterson, and he very quickly had him uh, uh, in the assessment and had him dialed, uh, had his pain gone uh, for the first time in three months in the space of one office visit, and then has been progressing him steadily now to through the strengthening program that we use to get him uh, ready for spring ball uh, a little bit better. So um, the other things that we would throw in with that, um, you know, uh, Justin, uh, Dr. Dean uh, put a video up not too long ago. Maybe he'll put it up on his uh, profile page again of working with uh, one of the athletes that we've seen in our clinic a lot, uh, Chris Duffin, and helping to troubleshoot some other things that were going on in Chris after a back injury as well. And uh, Justin found some involvement of the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve that helped to open up his range of motion very quickly when he was using that. So um, again, the, uh, the parlor trick of um, the dermal traction method or yapping, uh, as somebody uh, said during the course in Denver, um, you can't overlook the functional causes or the other structural contributors to the pain syndrome that is in front of you. You got to be uh, thorough on all of those fronts. And just because you can make their pain go away a little bit with uh, the dermal traction method, uh, you really probably shouldn't lean on that to be your uh, end all be all. You should be doing other things as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I would imagine then with mm -hmm. the, so with the dermal traction on, uh, on most people, then is it an attempt to get them to number one, desensitize the nerve and then also get them to manage their own pain, right? It's not an end-all fix. Correct. Um, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, uh, you know, the presence of pain with a movement pattern, it's going to cause adaptation. The body's going to move to try to avoid that pain. So you, it gets in the way of the rehab that you're trying to do. Um, so if you can get that pain off of the table relatively quickly so that the patient can move a bit more authentically, if you will, for lack of a better word, then uh, it's a good uh, it's a good place to go, and uh, I think and um, and and do that to try to get a little better quality movement, and then maybe have the person do that before they do their workouts or their um, their other uh, athletic endeavors to try to get that out of the way. But you, from a functional standpoint, also want to be you know using your other systems of assessment and uh, and and such to try to figure out what the, the reason for that 
irritability in that neural, uh, those neural structures is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what would you tell a student who's graduating right now from PT chiropractic school or med school that they need to know about back and yap dermal traction? Uh, I, I would, uh, I showed a video um, there in uh, Denver that um, I've kind of kept under the wraps for a few years, um, but I think it's worth pulling it out and getting a little scrutiny on it. But I would say um, be neurocentric in your approach. Um, as LV said, uh, muscles protect nerves. So if you're not fully screening the neural compartment, everything from the smallest caliber neuro with the superficial and cutaneous uh, nerves to the larger caliber neurology of the uh, peripheral nerves to the nerve roots themselves <clears throat> to the, um, the top-down phenomenon of belief systems and enculturation associated with uh, the, uh, that person's pain syndrome and their, um, uh, the, and the BPS model, the, the psychosocial aspects there. So be neurocentric in your approach. Look for all of those uh, irritability in all of those areas and work out from there. Um, ben says, uh, I would tell them to come to the LA, LA course <laughs> June 16 and 17. So I, I couldn't disagree with you, Ben. <laughs> right. Hey, hey, Ben, what would you tell the public or the students uh, the best food to eat the first year out of practice since you have no money? <laughs> he's, he's gonna he's gonna roll with ramen i'm sure yeah ramez it's ramen. good to good to see ramez there uh i'm uh, i haven't seen you in years buddy since uh down in phoenix um is there anything that you would like to recap as we start to close here i, I mean how can people reach you i know you got a couple different sites which one do you pay attention to the most oh boy uh <laughs> That's that's a great question because uh, it's it's always when we haven't even talked about the third site. That one's my rehab exercise, which we're rebuilding right now, trying to get the <laughs> dust off of it and uh, make it work um, a little tighter. Um, but uh, yeah, you can if people are trying to get in touch with me, Facebook here is a good way to go. Um, my email is drphilipsnell at gmail dot com. That's two L's in Philip, no dots, dashes, or underscores. Um, so those are good ways to get in touch with me. I do uh, have an Instagram account and a Twitter account, but I, I pay uh, le much less attention to those feeds. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I was going to tell you, my, like, I, I liked actually the, the Yap course or the, uh, the, the platform. I think you guys did a really good job of videoing. Um, and I love the over voice. I was having your, your, uh, your voice echo in my sleep for a while there because I watched enough time. <laughs> that's, that's a little that's a little creepy Seb, but uh, i'm just gonna let that lay there that that's that's right there with my like, teddy bears yeah and your, <laughs> and your 15 throw pillows no it, it honestly happens it's funny like when i was i had any any person i interview i typically go through and i listen to all their podcasts right and if they have d d podcasts videos all that kind of stuff so i make sure that i'm i'm aware but so actually this happened with mcgill's stuff i was i listened to all of his stuff and then we talked a couple times and i was reading his book and it like I'm like, I literally can hear your, your Canadian voice in my head. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's all the questions I have for you. Is there anything okay. else you want to say to people on Facebook Live here before we close it out? Uh, it's just fun. Uh, it's fun to kind of do these, uh, these types of thing and, um, and see the folks that I've become acquainted with a little bit online and have seen it uh, at other venues and stuff over time. And uh, brings a smile and uh, nice to see you guys out there doing good stuff in the world. Bobby, uh, Bobby Mozafari, when are you, uh, where are we going to see you? Which one of these courses? Um, and uh, Will's coming on there at the end. And Will, thanks for your help with uh, my patient that I sent down to you a little while ago. And uh, Bobby, where are we going to see you? Where are you going, Bobby? <laughs> Bobby, where are you going? But, by the way, everybody, if you're if you're looking to listen to this on uh, the actual edited version later, uh, the podcast is Performance Place Sports Gear Podcast. You just find it on iTunes and Google Play and all that jazz, and um, just want to make sure you can find all the stuff. We got other good people on there as well. Uh, yank away the flu. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't do it right. Just didn't yeah. do it right, Brandon. Yeah, come yeah, on, you gotta, Sauce. You got to grab you gotta, the tongue. 
I think it'll like, <laughs> grab the, the uvula. Wait, yeah. what, what, connect, what connects what neurology connects to the lungs? <laughs> Don't start with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay, so... Um, usually I say stand the line and we'll talk after, but I don't know how this is going to happen when I shut it down. <laughs> um, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll close out the podcast here and then we stay on Facebook live until we want to close it out. All right. Okay. I close it out. <laughs> there we go. All right. So the podcast is done. Now we can just talk about, you know, I don't know, beer. Um, we could have talked about that on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. There was just too many good stuff. So I want some. I want some. I want Cody to send us some hearts. By the way, Cody, send hearts, please. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. I, I think this was really good. I think um, I I was talking to to Ben about about your course uh, coming in July. So I anticipate making it. Reading all uh, can can. Hey, does this does this save? Does this video save for people on Facebook? Uh, yeah, it'll it'll stay on. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll stay on my feed. So uh, you know, we could try to do something like good grief. Lots, yeah. lots of hearts there, buddy. You know, nice. I think actually, I think part of the algorithm for, for, for social media is the more that people are on it or like it, the more it goes viral. So if we're going to actually get people to, to, to learn, hear your good news, I think we need everybody right now, all 11 <laughs> people. To this do, is start to, uh, Heart this is start, out of this thing. Yeah, this is starting to sound a little bit like a uh, a southern revival here. You know, we're gonna have the <laughs> we're gonna have the call the come to Jesus moment here. And uh, oh, look at this! Ben says yes, it does stay, and you can download it. Oh, imagine all the fun things you could do with this video, people that are watching. Imagine. Oh, yeah, oh God. Think you know, of the meme you, potential, Ben. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right. Luckily, like you're, you're hiding. I don't know. I don't know how it looks on everyone else's end, but right now you're hiding behind part of my picture. So ah. you can't get a full facial thing. Oh, ah, yeah, so. okay. There we go. <laughs> That's a little better. What course in July? Uh, tell us about the course in July. Um, we are um, looking at the possibility of putting, of running one in Albany in July right now. Um, Jason Brown, and one of his former associates are uh, exploring that as a possibility, Bobby, but nothing has been, uh, nothing's been firmed up yet. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, Cody, Cody. Hey, hey, Cody, you don't want to speak about that video you sent Ben the other night? I'm sorry? I don't know. Uh, Cody sent Ben a video the other night, which is very similar to what he's posting on here right now. Ah. Um, um, cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I, as soon as I did that, Bobby, I thought, yeah, somebody's going to still frame that and I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> so don't, yes. don't be that guy, Bobby. Yeah. Um, just curious. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know. Have you seen the other side of these Facebook lives? Do you know, do you know what they're looking at right now? Are we split screen or are we just, cause right now I'm I small, you're I'm, big. Yeah, what I'm seeing right now is the same thing. I've got full screen and a little uh, inset for you. When I did it with um, Eric Haroldson last week, and maybe if Eric's still on here, maybe he can give us a hand. Um, we were able to get a split screen. Bobby said he was seeing split screen. Yeah. Um, um, what do you, What are you guys seeing out there? Uh, we're, we're done. Most we're done with most of the technical stuff probably right now. In case you guys do want to tune out, but uh, we need to learn here about how to do this. Because yeah, so if any of you guys are uh, are hip to hip to this new tech, help some old people. We couldn't even uh, get Skype working. Literally, that's why we're on here. <laughs> have you have um, you called the test center before? Like you 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 get to hear a robot and you speak to the robot. I have not. No. Yeah, that's how you test your audio. It's a big deal. Yeah. So uh, I say, tell you what, it's just so that we can troubleshoot while we're uh, on here. For your edification for for future ones too, Seb. Why don't we uh, try turning our cameras, our devices sideways? How's that look? going, landscape? I look. I feel fine about this, but where'd you go? I'm not sure. Am I still I there? Think you got your. Uh, no, I think you got your finger over it. Or something, or maybe you turn the. Oh, there, I see you. No, I hey, vertical. I just tap this, tap the screen. Oh, Bobby, you like vertical, right? 
Hey, Eric, how did we get to split screen last time when we did this, bud? I, uh, you know, there, there are programs that allow you to be, yeah, I've, I've seen, uh, I've seen zoom. I haven't tried it, Bobby, but, um, there, there are programs that you can buy that will help you with, with this particular process. But, um, but, uh, the, this is, you can do this on an iPhone or, or a smartphone if you've got two people and just, uh, do it. Yeah live broadcast and then invite a person on you know i'm I'm kind of curious actually since there's all these people on here that are watching and i see shane on there shane's a smart dude marianne cody uh there's a bunch of people how come you guys don't do facebook lives is there like a hang up here where like only me and phil are, are egotistical enough to be on and do virtual selfies with each other i think you're probably uh heading on to something there it's uh, I mean, it's all about the ego right yeah well i i, I mean it's I've, t I've talked to people about like, you know, like if you want to, if you want to, if you want to share a message on something, you got to get out there and do it. Um, and there's going to be haters, like you said, but uh, I think all the people that, that want to practice, want everyone to practice like them, or at least, you know, do a good job, then I think they should be sharing their, sh their shit, you know, but what's a good so, idea, Ben? What, what's a good idea, Ben? What are you talking about? Three a week, ah, damn, Cindy. Three a week, Cindy. Good grief. How do we That's get? An, in? How do we? Yeah, how do we get into your private group, Cindy? Yeah. <laughs> live videos, maybe. Hmm. Wait, that's a good idea. Live. Oh, Ben wants to do live videos. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've been under the thought too that I know we talked about a little bit the seminar. It's like you, if you got good information or, or hopefully good information and you want to share it, but then no one sees it. What's the problem with the way you promote it? You know, yeah, that's a whole yeah. other problem. Yeah, Super it's a whole lot easier doing. Yeah, you're not self conscious, Bobby. I've seen you on <laughs> Facebook, man. <laughs> Jesus, you're ripping new ones and people on a daily basis. Yeah. And it's good. It's good ripping. <laughs> um, Phil, right. if, you need to, uh, if you need to go, by the way, let me know. Um, um, You're okay, Cindy, it's a women's now. power group for self-exploration. Huh. Uh, yeah, we, Seb and I crashing that would probably be poor form then. Uh, well, I don't know. I think we got stuff to add. There's, there's probably what they're trying to – uh accomplish has to do with the other gender too we can Maybe. have insight you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I'm, I, I'm comfortable with my feminine side you do have the throw pillows and white pants uh, yeah so yeah you know i've got i've got the the wardrobe to prove it <laughs> uh. Yeah. No, no, I think at this point we've uh, probably talked it out and I've got, yeah. uh, I got to go yeah. get a workout in. So, uh, right on. You know, when we put the, uh, we'll put the, the bow on this one, Seb. Okay. Um, I will send you the edited version when I have it. I'll just do intro exit. Uh, if there's anything that you think is relevant for like links or videos or anything that, in, that they need to see with it, just send them over to me and I'll include them in the show notes. Sounds good. Cool. All right. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Um, nice to meet somebody new that's of uh, similar mind, and I'm sure our paths will cross again very soon. Yep. I'll see you soon. You just not. Right. You won't. You won't know when. All right. Take care, <laughs> mate, and uh, all the rest of you guys. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Go help some. Go help, folks. <laughs>